right, we're live. Hi, everyone. Hi, Donna. How are you? Hey, Mike. I'm great. How are you today? Good. I'm excited about this one. We've spoken about um, artificial intelligence, um, but it's been, uh, hey, have you heard about ChatGPT? Have you heard about these different things? We never did a presentation. We were interrupting our own state of the Groovians or live streams or product information uh, and getting going a little bit off the rail because there's so much exciting stuff to talk about. So we've decided that we want to do a good, a good several hour presentation uh, with you today on, uh, on AI. First, we're going to talk about everything AI. What are the use cases? Um, we won't spend too much time on the use cases. We're just going to talk about them, but then we're going to spend some good amount of time on the actual use cases as it applies to digital marketers. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, you know, the history of AI, what's going on, just so that we can, you know, real brief, just so that we can walk through. Then we're going to talk about how we're using it in our business. We're going to talk about all of the different tools that are available out there, uh, where you can find different tools, where you can stay up to date on tools. And then uh, we're going to show you, we're going to be bringing on a couple of people. One of them is my cousin, Cliff. He's in the lobby here. He'll be coming on later with his wife, Gina. They own... Um, a law firm here in uh, in South Florida in Miami, and they've been asking me to help them with their marketing and redo the site. And he says, "Hey, you know, maybe I'll come down, you know, next week." And I said, "Hey, I'm doing a live stream. Why don't you just come on and be my guest? And if you don't mind doing it in front of everybody, we're going to do it." So, what what you're going to learn, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a framework that you can use in your own business. <clears throat> and then we're uh, later we're going to talk about how um, how we anticipate on using Groove in the software platform coming soon. Uh, David Lemon and uh, myself and Husni had a conversation about that yesterday, uh, about something that we can do uh, for Groove in the platform, because obviously every company should be looking at how they could use AI, especially if you're a SaaS company. So Donna, we're, are you excited? We're gonna jump right in. I am super excited about this content, um, you know, both to, I, I feel like every time we have a conversation, I learn something about, uh, about AI. Because uh, I know you're deep in the rabbit hole, and I'm deep in about 30 rabbit holes, so uh, <laughs> yeah. you go deeper than I do, um, uh, which is great. Uh, so I, I learn something every time Mike opens his mouth and we talk about AI. But I am so blown away by the case study that you showed me of what you did, and um, even just going yeah, through with to prepare the document for our members today. Um, I'm I'm so blown away with that process, and I think people are going to be really really excited about it. So I plan yeah, on staying I've, in the background. I'm here if you need me, um, but I'm okay. you know, I'm I'm going to be multitasking. Well, all right. So Donna, we're going to be moving fast, like real, 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 real fast. And mm -hmm. I've got about sixteen tabs open. So folks, we're going to be giving resources, um, but you really want to be paying attention because Mike Keenig's uh, Mike Keenig's did a presentation uh, a couple of days ago, and I was. Uh, part of it as well for our flight club mastermind. And one of the things that was happening was uh, just only with 20 people in the room. Uh, can you go back? What was that website? What was that website? Because what happens is we say the website and then we tell you what it can do. And then you get the aha moment and we're on to the next slide. So, and we're going to try to do our best to get a resource guide of everything that we talk I'm about. I'm going to just share the Google slide. doc right now with everybody. Okay. Um, and right. let them know that as you are pointing out resources, I'm going to be adding them to the Google Doc. So you can okay, sit back great. and listen and know that I'm going to put notes here for you. That's primarily what I'm doing in the background during all of this. Um, okay, great. So let me open up my uh, <clears throat> my first one and share my screen here. Present slides. No, my screen. And I've made my screen a little bit larger. Okay, so, okay, everyone. So the first thing we want to talk about is artificial intelligence. Now let's get the you know the fun, silly stuff out of the way first. Is this Skynet? Uh, no, Skynet has not come. Uh, computers haven't become sentient. Uh, some people argue whether or not it's ever going to happen. Um, or, uh, and some people, uh, and I'm closer to the people that say, you know, we're pretty close to it. It's referred to as the singularity. 
uh, when all technology just converges and, you know, right to one point. And they're expecting that. Ray Kurzweil is a, is a person that talks about this a lot. And uh, they're expecting, <clears throat> he predicts that, um, that, you know, we will have the singularity hit in about 2029. So right now, artificial intelligence uh, works basically on, they've created um, neural networks with, with computers to act like human brains. And what they do is they feed it models. They can feed it text models. They could feed it image models. They could feed it <clears throat> uh, video models. And believe it or not, too much information can actually hurt the model. You, it's, you have to mold it and tweak it a certain way. And then you, you groom the model. And uh, that's what these companies are, are doing right now. So <clears throat> AI, if you watch anything uh, uh, from different tech leaders, is, is very, very polarizing. There's a lot of people that are saying, we don't know, you know, uh, what we're messing with. Like, if we give, if we, if we create an all-powerful <clears throat> being, if you remember the, 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 uh, the game War Games um, with Matthew Broderick, you know, I was a, a young teenager or a kid when that movie came out in the early '80s. But essentially, that movie in the '80s, you know, 40 years later, was predicting what's happening uh, right now, and they they uh, realized that you know a computer got into the nuclear codes and <clears throat> it was seeing a threat uh, uh, as a global uh, what was it called uh, global uh, thermal nuclear destruction something like that and <clears throat> it uh, it realized that if anybody else had nuclear global weapons, thermonuclear war <clears throat> global thermal like, nuclear yeah thermal i was nuclear wasn't going to let that, that slide <laughs> yeah thank you and it, um, it, it realized that it was a threat for other countries to have the weapons if we had them. So the only thing that it should do is strike first. And then it, it, it was doing so many different scenarios, launching from uh, New York, Miami, submarines. And it realized every time it launched, another co country launched. And it played out millions of different scenarios. And essentially what they did is they hacked into it and they said, okay, let it play tic-tac-toe so it can it could get this faster. And it played every variation of tic-tac-toe and realized, and it's just stopped. And it said, the only way to win is not to play the game. Uh, <clears throat> so it didn't launch the, the missiles because it realized it was going to be, um, you know, nuclear disaster no matter what. You couldn't get them off fast enough. So, you know, is AI going to is it something that we need to be uh, worried about? I think many, many governments are going to be asking those questions. That's not something that we need to ask questions for. So what is AI right now today? AI is not sitting there dreaming. You know, it's not like the movie Her, you know, or anything like that, or, or Ex Machina. It's, uh, it's not sitting there and having its own thoughts, which can lead to some bad things. That's the bad thing is if it has its own thoughts. <clears throat> Essentially, AI right now, is just prompt uh, prompt based. You feed it information and it gives you back information. So here's the difference between AI and Google. <clears throat> Google indexes the world's information and it just does a, a, a cache on all the world's information, creates a very sophisticated search index. And when you type something, they use an algorithm to tell you what they think is most important and they present it to you. <clears throat> AI, takes all the world's information, takes all of the subtitles down from every single video on the internet, transcribes everything, all of the world's information, Wikipedia, everything. And then the companies kind of tweak those models and they put it into a neural network and it works like a brain. So what that means is if, if um, <clears throat> for, for the most part, if you're logged out of Google, right, in, in incognito, and you do a Google search and I do a Google search, we're going to get the same results. With AI, if you ask it a question and I ask it a question, it's going to give us the same answer, slightly different. <clears throat> Every time, it's going to give a different answer. Just like if you were to ask me on Monday, what is AI? And then you ask me on Friday, what is AI? For the most part, you know, it's like me doing a webinar. I'm going to give you the same presentation, but it's not going to be identical because what it is, it's actually going into its neural network. It's coming up with an answer and spitting it out. <clears throat> so... The last thing that we're going to talk about, and then we're going to get into the interesting stuff, is the power of AI in the hands of the few. <clears throat> so, um, if you if you know, you know, uh, with history, 
with the nuclear weapon or the atomic weapon first, uh, they, uh, Albert Einstein from his scientists, uh, friends had told him that they heard that, uh, the Germans were working on, uh, the Nazis were working on, um, an atomic weapon and, uh, going against his, his better judgment at the time, he, uh, Einstein, uh, felt that anybody having an atomic weapon was bad for humanity, <clears throat> but the lesser of two evils would be better if the, if the United States got it before the Nazis. So he urged uh, the president to create, uh, you know, what, what, what ended up creating the Manhattan Project. <clears throat> and you can imagine what the world would have been like if the Nazis would have created uh, the atomic weapon before, the, uh, before any other country. Uh, likely every country in the world right now would be speaking German and we'd be one, one nation. <clears throat> so people like Elon Musk and Peter Thiel, they were the co-founders of... Um, of PayPal. Obviously, they went on to do many, many things after that. They feel that it, uh, that AI, uh, not in the state that it is right now, but if it gets to a certain point and it's in the hands of uh, very, very few people, uh, it could be dangerous like a nuclear weapon. So there are some companies that are keeping it private, and that's like Google. You've heard of DeepMind. Uh, <clears throat> Google is a, a for-profit company that's developing AI. And what Peter Thiel and Elon Musk did is they have a, a, one of the most brilliant AI engineers as their CEO, and they created something called open AI. And they wanted to democratize AI so that you and I and everybody can have access to not only use the AI, but uh, develop for the AI. <clears throat> so what you see on my screen right now is a company called open AI. Uh, it's, it's, an, uh, it's a nonprofit company uh, they are creating a profit arm for it because if you do use ChatGPT, you do see that it's going down. It's down more than 50% of the time that you uh, that you want to use it. And it's very, very expensive. It, it's, you know, it's about 4,000 times more expensive than Google for every single search. It uh, uh, ChatGPT um, uses the text model. It came out in November. It was the fastest SaaS company in the world ever to reach 1 million users. It did it in five days. The fastest uh, company ever before that, uh, I think, was TikTok or something like that. And it took them over 30 days. So what that means is uh, for us, we can we can use AI for ourselves. You know, Mark Ling uh, has about six or seven different programs that he's created off of um, OpenAI for his business. We're not going to talk too much about that. At the end, we'll talk to you, like I said, about what we can do with Groove. But I do want to let you know, I'm going to show you a lot of different companies that are using AI or using open AI that you think maybe are these incredible uh, you know, companies out there that are geniuses in, in uh, AI. And they're not. They're, they're basically, the, what we're seeing right now is <clears throat> what happened when the iPhone came out and apps came out. You're, you, you saw a rush to apps. And in the beginning, you saw s silly, stupid apps like iFart Mobile, and then billion dollar companies like Airbnb and Uber were built out of the app marketplace. And that's what you're seeing right now. But I'll give you one example. You may have heard of Jasper.ai. Uh, Jasper, um, another competitor of Jasper is copy.ai. There's Writer. These companies came out about two years ago. Um, Jasper came out as Jarvis, and essentially all they are is a user interface wrapped around open AI, which is essentially what you're seeing with ChatGPT. They just created a user interface, tweaked it for direct response, and they created models that you can now do essentially with, with uh, ChatGPT. But they've raised tens of millions of dollars. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what they're worth, but I'm sure they're, they're worth over $100 million dollars. Uh, and they're raising money uh, like crazy. So I'm going to show you a lot of different, a uh, lot of different companies uh, that are doing that right now. So let's um, let's take a look at a couple of different uh, things that you want to you want to take a look at. So one right here, this is called uh, Futurepedia.io. What's uh, and there's a what's interesting about Futurepedia is you can search. So if you just type in uh, copywriting, <clears throat> what you'll see here and I'll zoom my screen in a little bit more, is you're getting companies that are working on copywriting, right? And you can see they're popping up left and right. Let's see if there's uh, companies uh, for SEO. 
All right. So here are companies that help you uh, build articles uh, for your website, you know, uh, very, very quickly. Uh, so this is a search engine. Uh, and when you get to, when you get to Futurepedia, they'll show you, uh, you know, at the beginning, you know, what, what's new. You could search by what's new, by what's hot, by what's popular, uh, et cetera. They've got tags and verified as uh, some of the new things they've added. Let's look at what's popular. Never heard of this. Andy is a search uh, for the next generation. Use Okay. So it's uh, kind of like a conversation in text, but you get the picture. So that's futurepedia.io. There's another one called, it's the same exact thing called future tools. I'm impressed tools. with how um, rapidly these stay updated too. I, I just wanted to jump uh, in. Yeah. Like Futurepedia changes every time I go there. There are more resources on there. Yeah, it was a young man that started it. It's a friend of someone that I know. I don't know them well. I just met them. And uh, they told me that, you know, he started this as a hobby and it's completely blowing up. And what he's doing is is brilliant is because he's creating an affiliate link for every single one of these things. Uh, so brilliant. that's why some of them are are verified. Right. Um, that makes so, sense. Uh, so that's uh, that's future uh, Pedia. Uh, and this is this one here is called future tools io future tools io. Uh, next, we want to talk about. Um, video. We're not going to get too deep into that, but there are some AI video editors that uh, that are exploding. Uh, one you might want to check out. It's called uh, CapCut. I don't want to get too much into this, but essentially, um, it just makes video editing very, very quickly. It cuts out all of the ums, the ahs. It does punch-ins, and you can just tell it, I want this to be for stories or for TikTok. It creates the format. And it helps you add pictures automatically. Does your uh, your subtexts, your your uh, subtitles, all those different things for you. The next one is called Descript, okay. And we use it here in the company. This is one of our our favorite tools. Let me just pull up um, my Descript uh, app over here. All right, and you can see here we have our different projects. Uh, here, but what makes Descript very, very interesting is that, <clears throat> let's see right here, when you import a video or an audio, you'll notice that it transcribes everything for you. And if you've ever edited in video before, you have to click and you have to click play and you have to listen and then you have to cut out, you know, any particular section that you're working on. What's nice about this is if you see there's an error right here, you just highlight this section in the text and you just delete and it'll automatically delete it and it knows exactly how to get rid of the breaths of the, and all those different things. It makes it so easy to, uh, you know, to create. Let me show you something that probably would have taken me uh, several hours to do, uh, but I was able to do literally in about 10 minutes with Michelle. This was a, a quick little edit I put on, on an iPhone with Michelle, we imported it in here. And then you create these little scenes. Each scene is like a PowerPoint slide. And then you could drag all these different things in here, images and GIFs. And you just, it's its like, it's as easy as using Canva. It's, it's a visual video editor and you barely even use the timeline down here. It's revolu revolutionized video editing. And as you can see here, when I click play, I can do captions like this here. I can put them anywhere and take a look at, at this little thing right here. And then we'll move on here, but, but <clears throat> making it look like Michelle was talking in front of a group of people was very, very easy. I just uh, typed in audience point of view stage. And then I just pulled that video right in uh, and put it there. And then I took, the, the one with Michelle, there's all these little effects here. I just click green screen. And this was done, as you can see, in her, uh, in her studio. But I clicked green screen. And by clicking green screen, it removed the background of her just like that. And then I just took the video and I said, go to the back. So that's Descript. You definitely want to check it out. One of the other things that's really interesting about Descript, if I say something like December 14th, 2022, or 2021, I can literally go in here and I can retype it and it, it knows your voice and it'll just re-edit it. So, and if, it's, if there's something I forgot to say, I can just 
I can just come in here and type, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and it's going to take Michelle's voice that it just learned, and it's going to add it right in there for it. So that's Descript. They originally came out as a podcast uh, tool, uh, but they're really shaking up the world in terms of, of video editing right now. Uh, and if you go to uh, OpenAI Fund, right? I'm going uh, to go OpenAI Fund, and I'm going to type in Descript. We're going to see here that Descript lands investment from OpenAI. So we're talking about this company from Peter Thiel. They have something called the Open AI Fund. So if you're looking to do a startup, um, this looks like it broke right here. Their page actually broke. Uh, now it loaded. So um, you can uh, request money, you know, to, to see if you can be in their fund here. But uh, essentially, they're, they're giving out money to AI startups. And Descript just got, uh, I don't know what it is, I think like $10 million dollars uh, from open AI and which means they're going to be getting some really good info inside information. So you want to be looking at, at Descript. Okay. The next one that we're going to talk about here, um, for video editing is called runway ML and the ML stands for machine learning. That's why they call themselves runway ML.com, but the software is known as runway. So, um, what you want to do this is really, really important. You want to go to uh, YouTube and you want to look for the Runway ML official channel. Okay. And when you get there, they have some uh, three minute uh, videos that, let's go to their official channel here. Click on videos. And you'll see all of these different things that uh, they can do. Again, too much for me to go over here. You could watch all of this stuff, but I'll put it to you this way. It's essentially Photoshop for video. You can literally just um, uh, hover. Uh, you know, uh, if, if there's two people in a video, you could take a tool and just swipe down on one person. And that person's going to be removed from every frame of the video. But Guys, I, I wish I had time to tell you more of this, but we have a lot. But you could literally go into a place where you see um, a coffee cup. You can highlight that, then use a, uh, a search term, and you could say a Bloody Mary, and then it'll replace the coffee cup with a Bloody Mary in the entire video, uh, and so much more. You have, to, you have to check out Runway ML. Anybody that, that does video editing or if you have a video editor on your tool, the, the the days of Final Cut um, and Adobe are gone. This is now a race between DaVinci Resolve, in my uh, opinion, and Runway. Machine learning, video editing, it's, it, it'll blow you away. Watch those videos. All right, moving on from uh, Runway. Um, before, before I show you these few, let's talk about, um, and Mike Keenings was, was fortunate enough, to, uh, I asked him and he gave me, um, gave me his slides from uh, the other day. So I'm going to use some, uh, these slides here because they give some good examples. So there's something called Midjourney. Okay. If you haven't heard of it, Midjourney is a text to image editor. That means you type what you want, the uh, what, what kind of image you want. And then, the, the, and again, if you just say a border collie, it's going to give you a border collie. But if you say things like photorealistic, in the style of Pixar, in the style of 1939 uh, Disney, in the style of Monet, Leonardo da Vinci, Leroy Neiman, Andy Warhol, whatever the case is, it's going to give you that. And um, I'll show you uh, how, how to use that software in a minute, but let's, let's see the power of it. So here's a text prompt that you put in to mid-journey and keep, uh, understand these images do not exist anywhere in the world. This is a computer. Uh, AI has gotten so good at creating images in less than 30 seconds, it's actually shaking up the art world. Donna can easily come on uh, and talk about how the art world is, is freaking out because you're basically taking someone's, someone's life's work of intellectual property. Um, there's arguments on both sides, but you're training it based on that person's work and creating work that only that person could create. 
And now people are selling art in the style of people and they're taking a lot of money away from, from these artists. Having said that, let's take a look at this prompt. It says Border Collie. And let me, uh, let me see if I can just make this a little bit bigger here. Okay. Border Collie throwing a fastball in the style of Leroy Neiman. This image that you're seeing was generated from your mind in 30 seconds and then comes right onto your screen that you, you can use. Um, but let's say that you wanted to do it in a different style instead of Leroy Neiman. How about Andy Warhol? <clears throat> right? So these are images that were given to you from, uh, from mid journey. You typed in border collie throwing a fastball in the style of Andy Warhol. And then depending on the one that you like here, you can then upscale it. You, so you would choose, this would be called V1, V2, V3, and V4. So if you say, okay, upscale V4 for me, then you will get, whoops, you will get something like this. And then you could say, give me more, uh, more styles like that or more realistic. So if you've ever heard of Salvador, Salvador Dali, um, the engine behind these, uh, these AI images is actually called Dali, D-A-L-L-E. And they named it by merging the idea of an artist like Salvador Dali and Wally, an artificial intelligence being, W-A-L-L-E. And so the engine that builds these types of uh, images owned by OpenAI, actually MidJourney is their own competitor, but OpenAI uh, uses their own, uh, um, what do you call it, framework uh, called Dali. <clears throat> so here's an image in Salvador Dali. Um, here's some more. We're going to go through these a little bit quicker. Create a grove of magic, psych of psychedelic magic mushrooms in the style of Salvador Dali. Okay, great. Um, Mike Keenix uh, is building a villa. Uh, he, he bought some land in Mexico. So he wanted to get some ideas. Create an architectural visualization of a beachfront property in Baja, Mexico with a swimming pool, palm trees, and fire pit. Now, um, if he would have put photorealistic, some of these like at the bottom here might have come out maybe a little more photorealistic. The, these are more like artist conception, right? But you could get them in any style you want. Moving on, here are some more versions of it. Uh, take a look at this. Create a minimalist newspaper comic strip about dueling podcasters with Deadpool and the Incredible Hulk. So it creates a, a fake made up language and then it gives you uh, different ones. Now, over here, it merged Deadpool and the, the Incredible Hulk. But as Mike said, these are some pretty cool things. So you can now uh, take these and then, you know, get rid of these things and add your own, uh, your own text there and create your own cartoons. This is simply a computer did this in 30 seconds. So let's uh, take a look at a, a couple of more. This was, you know, create a logo. Um, again, just changing the prompt, you get different types of logos, etc. cetera. Um, here's something that's interesting. We're going to talk about this um, later. Now, you see it says create a fintech website. Fintech simply means uh, financial technology. What's a financial technology website? Something like Coinbase, right, or PayPal, right? So you can tell it, create a website and uh, in the style of this or whatever, and you just give it some information that provides services to business owners that help them create uh, chief AI strategies. And then it gives you uh, different versions of websites. And then you can take that and you can import that into Figma and cut it up and then bring it into group pages, different things like that uh, can be done. In fact, that's you know how our, our designers start their designs first in Figma. So this is something that you could import right into Figma. Um, moving on, some more different prompts for websites, as you can see. Now, um, here he said, create a Facebook advertisement featuring the book, Your Next Act. Now, that's Mike's book on how to create a business you'll love for the rest of your life by Mike Keenings. Include a button to get the book for free uh, by clicking it. Now, Mike didn't give it a seed image of, of him. So it's uh, an end being that he said Facebook ad. I think that because of that, it made these funny eyes knowing that this is going to stand out more like a YouTube thumbnail. When you do that with the eyes and things like that, it's going to stand out more in, uh, in Facebook. But again, <clears throat> this is just, he said, make me a, a, a Facebook ad. So if you, um, I'm not, if you're not even aware, Canva now has 
um, AI, an AI search tool in it. Maybe later we'll show it, but just trust me for the most part, when you go into Canva and you're working on a slide, you'll see all of the tools, you know, images, shapes, uh, patterns, and just go down and you'll see AI. And then you could type in and it'll generate an image for you. Okay. All right. So here's some more. Create an Instagram uh, advertisement featuring the book, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and again, some of these things will give you ideas. As you can see, this one here, well, I don't know. Uh, that's pretty interesting. You merge the person into the book. It's pretty interesting. And then you could go in and you could, uh, uh, again, I'll show you how you can add your own um, your own images to seed things. <clears throat> so, um, all right. So uh, I'm going to go here. D this is just some ideas. Mike said, create a book cover with a title of a punch. Of, of Punch the Elephant and a subtitle, How to Sell Anything to Anyone. And look at these book ideas that it comes up for you, with for you. Guys, this is AI. It does this in 30 seconds from a prompt. And it creates a book just like this. All right? And so how this works is you need to go to midjourney.com. Okay? And then what you're going to do is it's going to tell you to – you're going to need the Discord app. Discord is like Slack but it's like a, a community forum. And so what you'll do is you, you can research this, get any YouTube video on how to, you know, how to create images with, with mid journey. You'll create your, you'll download um, discord. You'll add this uh, mid journey into your discord. And then what you'll see here are these different image prompt rooms and you go into an image prompt room and you're seeing that people are just typing in prompts asleep on the floor next to a fire in a tavern, blah, 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 blah. And you're getting uh, images just uh, just like like you're seeing here. All right. And they're, th this person looks like they put a seed image in and they're getting additional images uh, out of it. Uh, but these images, again, they don't exist. You could say something. This is just cyberpunk future theme. Uh, and then you could take that image and you can further tweak it uh, more and more and more. All right. So um, they give you uh, free designs. Uh, very, very limited. I think you maybe get like 50 free designs. But after that, you buy credits. I think if you buy something for like 200 bucks for the year, you'll basically have, you know, unlimited images that you'll that you'll ever need. And so you just come in here and you type in here uh, in the prompt. You just type in the word uh, imagine in the prompt and then you hit enter and then you type in what you want. And then there's some other things that you can do with it. You may have seen some of these new tools that come out that create avatar uh, images of you. Cliff, you were showing me all of yours uh, the other day. Cliff's in the, in the lobby. Uh, but essentially, all those apps did was create a user interface around these, these different tools that are out there. But what's interesting is you can say, uh, create me an image based on this image URL. And what's interesting is you can drag an image right into Discord you just drag it into the prompt, prompt, and then you click on the image, and then you can copy the link. And just by dragging the image, you now have an image URL. So then as uh, this, you could use that image URL as a seed. So let's say I drag my, my wedding photo in there. I would drag it in, and once I see it, I would right-click it, and I would copy the link, and then I would create a prompt. I would say, imagine using this image, create me a Pixar version of this on a motorcycle, rocketing through space. It's going to take Mike Fulsaim from my wedding, that picture. It's going to turn me into Pixar. It's going to put me on a, um, on a motorcycle, and then it's going to rocket me through space. And it's going to give me different versions of that. And I could say, give me more like version two. Upscale that to 4K. Make it photorealistic. Uh, the amount of things that you can do, folks, are just uh, endless. But that's just uh, mid-journey. All right, so we're going to continue to move on here. If you, if you haven't been familiar with that, <clears throat> uh, now you know. So the next thing I want to do is I want to talk to you about prompts, All right? So we're going to close this here, all right? Because um, creating prompts, it's kind of like writing copy, right? Some people are really good at creating prompts. The better you are at creating prompts, the better you're going to be at creating instructions for chat GPT or for images. So there are um, two prompt websites. Um, one is called Prompt Mania, Okay. Prompt Mania, but the one I'm really excited about is called Prompt Base. So check this out. Let me zoom in on this again. I'll zoom in so that it's a little bit bigger. What Prompt Base is, it's a marketplace. 
kind of like a fiver where people, instead of making pre-made designs, they made a recipe template, a pre-made prompt that you can buy. And then they give you examples. So let's just take a look at this. I'm going to click on this one. This guy's selling it for $6.99. Okay. And so if I like this art style, you know, I don't know how this person created the, you know, what was the prompt that this person used? I don't know, but I could buy the prompt for $6.99. Now that's expensive. You'll find most people are selling prompts for 99 cents and $1.99. But if you see anything that you like that, you know, you're like, oh, you know what? I could go out and spend 45 minutes trying to get this, but this is exactly what I need for the cover of my video game or for the cover of my my PDF report that I'm making. I'm just pulling an example, right? But I would call this Norman Rockwellish. I don't know, maybe, <clears throat> right? I would say this, this, there's some Norman Rockwell in this prompt. But let's say I didn't know that that was Norman Rockwell. I could buy this prompt for $1.99, and then I just change the variable from uh, woman sewing to uh, man hitting a golf ball, right? So that's prompt-based. And they, they don't just do it just for images. They do it for, um, for chat GPT. And uh, here, so here's one for chat GPT. And guys, you can actually, if you're good at making prompts, you can go in here and start selling your prompts. And if you get to one of those most popular prompts that sells 40 a day, you know, you can start making yourself a couple hundred bucks a day. So social media article creator. So this prompt is designed to help you. Uh, help users quickly and easily generate professional social media articles, blah, 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 right? And then, you know, there's different reviews. You can, you can see how many people reviewed it. So that is prompt base. Um, and like I said, you know, uh, guys, I could, if, I, if I'm not paying attention, I can get carried away and just start spending 15 minutes on all these different things. That's not the point of today. To point, today is to show you what's out there so that you could bookmark this stuff and go and dig in and really explode your, your, your business to the next level. Okay, this one is a little scary. Wow. This one is called personal.ai. So basically what you do is you give it access to your entire life if you want. You could upload all of your Skype conversations and it knows what you typed and it'll get rid of everybody else. They talk about everything is, you know, is secure and all that, but I'm just telling you what it is. You could upload all of your Google docs, all of your email conversations. You're basically creating, uh, your brain is put into AI. So what chat GPT is for the world, personal AI is for you. And then once you have this, you can then, it now knows everything you've ever spoken about. Every white paper you've ever written, every video sales letter, every, every thought that you've ever had that is archived, you could put your podcasts, your interviews, and then you've created a personal artificial intelligence version of yourself. Remember how you've heard in different movies, you've uploaded your consciousness? Let's look at it this way. This is uploading your consciousness. Kind of scary. Between you and me, I'm not going to do this. It's a little too scary for me. But then... It has plugins that you can use for Gmail, uh, for Chrome, for Google Docs and everything. And then you just give it a prompt and say, write an email to Donna and tell her I'm going to be late. It'll, and it knows that I say, hey, Donna, you know, whatever. You know, hey, Foxy. Uh, and it'll, it'll just do everything for you. It's, it uploads your consciousness. So as an introvert, I love this idea. Like if I could send <laughs> anyone who calls my phone to my bot. That would make me so happy. <laughs> Donna, that reminds me of the best ad that you ever uh, had ever written for a personal assistant. Um, you wrote all of these impossible things. And then the last one you said, and, um, and the most crucial thing is you must be able to read my mind. <laughs> yep. That was a job requirement that, that you put, you put there. Uh, it stays in all of my so, job ads. <laughs> yeah. So this is personal.ai. Okay. The next one here. Uh, guys, it's called Firefly. There's another company out there called Otter. Um, there's another company, a third company. I'm not sure who they are, but let me put it to you this way. What is Fireflies? Fireflies um, is something that you, um, you log into and then you connect it to your, your Google Calendar. And I don't know. I really don't know how the hell this thing works. I can imagine. But 
it will automatically show up on your Zoom calls, your Google Hangout calls, your Uber conference calls, every conference call out there in the world. And then on top of that, um, you can even download your, your recordings from Skype if you record your call and upload it into here. <clears throat> and so that's cool. It'll give you summaries of, of everything, but let me show you something that I did using uh, Fireflies. I took Fireflies and let me see here. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna show you a conversation that we had here. Let me make this full screen. Okay, so here was me talking with our, with our sales team and you can literally see here, I'm getting an echo from someone, right? So this is all the junk in the call. And then later we get into, um, uh, we're talking about what, what should happen on a sales call. Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, they cancel and blah, 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 right? So this was a, let's see how long this conversation was. <clears throat> One hour and 10 minute call. I simply took this transcript and I downloaded it from Fireflies because it recorded my call. <clears throat> and I just said, give me a summary of this call. It says to, it does this right here. Salespeople should do the same thing all the time, every time with every customer. This can be achieved by having word track. The most important thing in sales is to control the conversation, which is usually the person asking questions. The presenter is discussing how to deal with difficult customers. He says the most important thing to make blah, 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 difficult customers, making, meaning they're hard to, you know, they're saying, just give me the price, just give me the price, et cetera. Um, and it, it gave a summary of the conversation. I could say, give, give it to me in 1,000 words, give it to me in 3,000 words, give it to me in 30 words or whatever that may be. So that's, that's one example right there. I'm going to close that here. And again, remember, that was Fireflies, okay? <clears throat> um, here's... Uh, here's something we're going to go over in just a minute, but let me, let me show you another one here. Um, okay. Why is this not going? Oh, cause I'm in full screen. There we go. All right. Here's one where Donna and I, um, spoke about the mastermind. You could see Mike, Donna mastermind and, uh, Don and I were just talking uh, about the, the mastermind. What, uh, how should we, uh, what, what should we give every, and this was just a conversation that Donna and I had. And as you can see, this conversation lasted um, for 25 uh, minutes. And then when I was done, if I can find it here, bear with me just a second. <clears throat> I simply pasted that in and I said, give me a summary of that call. And it said this here. Certainly, it answered me like a human. Here's your summary. In this meeting, the speakers delve into the key foundations of the success and how they differentiate successful individuals from those who are unsuccessful. They begin by discussing the importance of being in a mastermind. It literally took out all of the crap. And all right, Don, I'll see you tomorrow and all that stuff. And it gave me a summary of my outline. And guys, I was able to take this and use this as my outline for the PowerPoint uh, the creation that I created for uh, for my uh, for the the collective mastermind, which we launched uh, right around the Christmas holiday. So I'm giving you just some use cases. Now, there are some caveats I want to let you know. ChatGPT has limited the amount of data that you can uh, that you can that you can dump in there now. But that's what I wanted to let you know. The very very first thing at the beginning, Open AI. Guys, this is the least intimidating. Uh, if I type in open, open AI um, docs, documentation, <laughs> should be logged in. Any good developer is going to tell you that this is one of the, the, the most well laid out documentation. The best documentation probably ever laid out by any company is probably Stripe. And uh, my developer said to me that this was laid out just like, like Stripe. But look, text completion, okay? Code implementation. I'm not trying to tell you, uh, you know, if you're not interested in, uh, if you're not a programmer, but if you are a programmer or you have one on your team or if you've ever used a developer before, you will just see that you just, we, we created um, an account. We got an API key in a minute. And then you download the module and then it just says, okay, um, create a prompt that does this. And you load it onto your own server. So 
OpenAI created ChatGPT just to be an, a user interface to show the world what can be done. You could have created your own ChatGPT. It would have put you out of business because it's very, very expensive. And basically the way it works is like this. And don't quote me on the prices, but I don't know. But for, I remember what I was looking at. Basically, every thousand words that it exports is something like 0. 0.0, like four cents or point or 0.4 cents for every thousand words that it exports. So it's very, 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 very affordable. All right. So now that we understand that um, that this exists, you can any limitations that you're getting with ChatGPT, you wouldn't get uh, with this. All right. So now I want to talk about some uh, quick use cases. Okay. Uh, all right. Let me go up to the top here. I'm going to talk about some quick use cases that uh, that you can do. Um, that we're not going to really uh, go too much into here. Oops, my notion just popped up. All right. Um, so number one, you can uh, you can talk about programming code. You can write code, you can debug code, and you can convert code. So you can go into ChatGPT. Um, let me just open up a new one here. So I don't want to, whoops. See if they're down. So if you can go right into here and say, write me, um, write me code for a countdown timer in JavaScript that will redirect to this website, and you just literally type it in, and it'll type uh, type the code, right? So let, let's just write a real quick one here. Write, write me code in PHP that counts down from 1 to 10 and displays it on the screen. All right, I'm doing this because, you know, I don't want to write any complex thing because we got a lot to cover today. But now what you're going to see, and ChatGPT is a little a little slow um, because they got millions of users on here. It's, it's just gotten a little slower. They're working on it. They just got $10 billion in funding from Microsoft. Maybe we'll come back here in a minute and you'll, you'll, uh, you'll see. But uh, just trust me when I tell you, it'll just print out your uh, your PHP code. But the other thing that you can do is then you can just say, now write it for me in JavaScript. Now write it for me in Python. Or you can take code that you get from GitHub um, or you purchase that at Code Canyon. And you could say, you could paste it and say, convert this code from PHP to Python. And it'll just convert code. And it'll also debug your code. So uh, there's a couple of a couple of companies out there that have, uh, that have uh, taken this to the next level. One, if you have a development company, you have a developer in your company, or you, um, you have a SaaS company, this is a must. You're falling behind if your development team is not aware of something called Copilot, okay? Uh, you just Google GitHub Copilot, um, and it will write code for a developer 10 times faster. It uses just regular human prompts and also... Uh, anyway, not going to get too much into it here, but as you can see here, it, there it is, writing code for you, just like that. Um, it is revolutionizing development. It's making teams, uh, you know, ten times faster, and it works inside of built-in code editors. There's another one here called uh, Codezy. Uh, this is it, it optimizes your code as you're writing it, so you can write sloppy code, and as you're writing it, it'll just clean your code, and you'll have the most beautiful uh, code uh, available. All right. So that's for coding. Um, obviously, yeah, we got a network uh, error here. Um, now, uh, the next thing that we want to talk about uh, just real, real quick is that you, you can use it for things like um, support. You're going to be seeing companies like Help Scout, Zendesk, Integrate, um, Artificial Intelligence right into the uh, right into support. Now, let me see if I could write a uh, write a new chat here. Let's let's see, um, and you'll see um, how. If you haven't seen this before, you see. Um, I've done this on a couple of streams. How do I animate a button on the canvas of a Groove page? Let's see if ChatGPT is down. But um, and if I said, give me step by step instructions, it'll say step one. 
go to groove.cm, step two, click the login, et cetera, and it'll literally give it to you. Uh, unfortunately, ChatGPT is a little bit slow, and that's why I opened up some of these prompts here earlier today so that I would, I would have my prompts in there uh, ahead of time. <clears throat> Cliff and Gina, we're going to hope that this does come back up by the time that you come on, because we're going to be using this uh, for your, uh, for, 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 for you, but we'll still be able to get around it. Uh, don't worry. All right. So, um, so that's how it can be used, uh, you know, for support. Other things that it's being used for right now is music. It can write lyrics. It can write uh, rap songs, rap battles. Uh, after it writes a song, you can say, now give me the melody, give me the chords, give me the drum beats, give me the, uh, the, the, the guitar tabs, and it'll, it'll basically write songs. Does it write anything good right now? No, it's kind of wonky, but uh, one of the music companies just signed an AI artist, and they have a song in the top 40 right now. The song was created uh, all with, uh, <clears throat> oh, look at this. Oh, it's actually giving me um, giving me some uh, CSS. It uh, uh, I'd have to redo the prompt here, but you see it on my screen right here. So let me uh, let me do it like this. Let's uh, edit this prompt. How do I animate a button uh, on Groove Pages with Groove Funnels? All right. So while I'm talking, let's let that uh, come. Uh, Come back. <clears throat> right. And so, um, yeah, as we were saying, it, it writes music. It's doing all of these uh, these different things right now. Uh, people are using it to write um, write stories. It could write a screenplay. If you were to say, write me the screenplay. Uh, uh, if you were to say, write me the screenplay for the uh, opening scene for The Walking Dead following the events of the ending of season two. It'll know exactly what ended at season two and it'll it'll create um, uh, a screenplay for you for the opening scene. Uh, <clears throat> but some of the other things uh, that are interesting is as marketers, now let's start talking about how we could use this uh, as marketers. Let's click that button there. Okay, as marketers, uh, we could use it to create guides, um, if this was working a little faster, I would show you some of these examples. You're just going to have to take my word for it uh, now. But you could say, create me all of the nodes that I would need for a mind map to teach people what uh, for funnel marketing. And it'll say your nodes should be this, and it'll create it in an outline form. You could say, uh, create, um, <clears throat> create um, a seven-day guide on how to eat paleo. Um, give me... Uh, a meal plan for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for seven days with uh, two snacks, and then give me a recipe for each of those meals in the style of Gordon Ramsay or in the style of a of a busy uh, stay at home parent, right? And it's gonna it's gonna it'll write this entire guide for you in just literally minutes uh, with the prompts. Okay, um, <clears throat> so you can make mind maps, workbooks, hot sheets. Uh, Anything that you want. And then you could go to the, the um, oh, here we go. This is, uh, if you're using group pages, a landing builder built on top of group phone platform, you can animate a button using the animate options available. First, select a button you want to animate by clicking the button on the editor. In the right side bar, you will see the animation tab. Click on the animation option. Select the animation you want to apply on the button, such as fade in, slide in, zoom. Set the delay and the duration for the, the animation. Preview your changes and publish your page to see the animation in action. If you want more complex animations, you can use CSS and JavaScript, which is what it gave me above, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> so guys, you can imagine my support team can get a question from somebody, paste it into chat GPT, and then get an answer and paste it back to the, the customer. All right? This is, th this is just one example. Now, again, normally... ChatGPT gives you this information in seconds, but it is, you know, uh, a prime time right now. And this thing has just exploded. But uh, I wanted to give you some examples. Now we're going to jump on in. I'm going to show you a case study that we did for our uh, new company that's uh, that we worked on for the last two years, uh, which is launching um, on, uh, on Friday. Uh, we've spoken about it a few times. It's called fitclass.com. So I'm going to go here and folks. This is the 
most important part of the presentation. So if you if you've been multitasking, if you haven't been paying full attention, this is where you want to learn uh, exactly how to use ChatGPT. And uh, and this is what I'm going to show you is revolutionary. I don't know anybody else that's using it this way. When I showed it to a couple of people, their brains just completely melted. All right. Most people are going into ChatGPT. They're clicking. Uh, they're they're clicking new chat and they're writing, give me this, give me that, give me this, et cetera. Okay, let me show you something better that can be done with it, all right? What you want to do is you want to do a brain dump, okay? You want to, so we have a, a SaaS company called FitClass, okay? And for me to tell you what FitClass is, it'd be easier if I just read the summary here. Let, after I did a brain dump, so let's talk about my process. This is what you need to do. When you go to chat GPT, you type in new chat, and I want you to spend 20 minutes minimum to 30 minutes talking about your company in every single way, shape, or form that you can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read maybe the first paragraphs right up to about here. This was me doing a brain dump the other day because I wanted help, help building the website marketing, emails, everything. I said, and I spoke to it like my personal assistant. I want to give you some information to use with more questions to follow. Here's the information. I have a SaaS company called fitclass.com. It's a fitness marketplace where trainers and instructors can list their virtual classes that they do using Zoom. The platform integrates with Zoom. The attendees can search and browse fitness categories, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? <clears throat> this also has many benefits for the trainer. I list some of the benefits. Um, I say, you know, it's kind of like a uh, fit class, it, class is a health streaming platform, like what Twitch is for gamers, what YouTube Live is for content creators, fit classes for health and wellness. I'm talking to it, just I'm doing a brain dump. And then at the end, I say, here are the different classes. <clears throat> okay. So it automatically just gives me a summary here. So now I said, give me an elevator pitch. So here's the elevator pitch for Fit class. Many of us have a problem describing our company. If you've ever noticed, sometimes you describe your company and other people are going, so you're kind of like a Fiverr and you go, well, no, not like Fiverr. It's more like, and they go, oh, so you're kind of like a freelance. Well, no, no. Well, that's the difference. And the people start getting frustrated because, so if you just do a brain dump and say, give me an elevator pitch, here's the elevator pitch. Fit class is a revolution. In fact, I'm going to do one even better. Let's make this more exciting. <clears throat> Watch this. Write me a pitch that I can use on Shark Tank, make it fun and witty with a sense of humor. So I'm going to read this. I'm sure every one of you has uh, watched the Shark Tank episode. Let's have a little bit of fun. Good evening, sharks. Welcome to fitclass.com, the ultimate virtual fitness marketplace where you can sweat in the comfort of your own home. You know how it is. You finally muster up the courage to join a gym. And before you know it, you're surrounded by buff, toned individuals, who make you feel like the before picture in a weight loss ad. Well, we're here to change that. With Fit Class, you can work out from the privacy of your own home, in your pajamas if you want to, and with our built-in tip system, you can even earn money while you burn calories. We're official partners with Zoom, so our trainers can reach a global audience, and you, as an attendee, can access a variety of fitness classes from yoga to CrossFit and everything in between. And the best part, it's free to join for both trainers and attendees. We're not just shaking up the fitness industry, Sharks. We're revolutionizing it. <clears throat> and we're not just asking for an investment. We're offering you a piece of the action. So who's ready to get in on the ground floor of the next best thing in fitness, next big thing in fitness? Fit class is the future of fitness, and we're inviting you to be part of it. This thing wrote a... Uh, I didn't tell it anything about this here. This is the one that cracks me up the most right here. Um, you finally muster up the courage to join a gym and before you know it, you're surrounded by buff toned individuals who make you feel like the before picture in a weight loss ad. I didn't say anything like that. I just spoke to it very generic. Like here's what it does. It does this, it does this. And I said, make it fun, witty with a sense of humor. And <clears throat> it did it. So you're going to see how long this is. We're going to go through this because I want to show you the power of what, what is referred to as the seed. First, give it a seed. And this chat will be available for you for the, for, for the next 30 years, anytime you need it. So <clears throat> I said here, write me a post that I could use to launch this on social media. 
write me a social post that I could give it to the health charter founding trainers, all of Michelle's friends that are in Zumba, um, so that they could, they could write it. So, hey, everyone, as a, as a health charter founding trainer, I'm excited to announce I'll be joining Fit Class. It already knew that they're not the owner anymore. Let me show you one that's really interesting. This email's for you next week. You'll see it. Write me an email I could use to launch this for my users of my other company. Now, these other people we are mailing, they joined my other company because they're digital marketers. Only some of them are going to be interested in health. I don't want to insult these people by promoting health if they're not interested. This is how I would talk to my copywriter, Carl Galetti. I would say, Carl, I would talk to him like this. Carl, make sure that we don't insult our users, right? <clears throat> so the email needs to address this. But since some of them may be interested in health and wellness and fitness, help me write an email to announce the launch of my new company, Fit Class, and ask them to join Fit Class where they get one year of no fees. Address them as groovesters and write it from me, Mike Fulsame, and make it fun and conversational. Gave me a subject line. Hey, groovesters. Mike Fulsame here, and I hope this email finds you well. I want to share some exciting news, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Now look at this. I said make it conversational. Remember it right here? Make it fun and conversational. So right here, it says, <clears throat> conversational. Now I know some of you, what some of you may be thinking, Mike, I'm a digital marketer, not a fitness enthusiast. And that's totally fine. But here's the thing. Everyone needs to take care of their health and wellness. And fit class is a great, <clears throat> excuse me, is a great way to do that from the comfort of your own home. Plus who doesn't love a good deal as a token of my blah, blah, blah. It wrote me this. So let, let's go on here and show you some more things that, uh, that, that I did here. Okay. Um, I said, I want guys really pay attention here because this is how you're going to use this for groove. I want to build a website for this. What navigation should I have for this website? So we're creating the framework. We're going to go wide and then we're going to go deep. I'm not going to uh, show you all of it. I'm not going to read it all to you, but because I think you're going to get the picture. So it says my website needs to have a, a home classes, trainers, schedule tips about us, FAQ, contact us, uh, log in and sign up and profiles. That's in the navigation. <clears throat> Maybe a little bit long. You know, some of those I would put into a drop down, right? Maybe I'd have six navigations and some would have a drop down. <clears throat> now, it doesn't read my mind, so I tweak it a little bit more. Add two more navigations. One will be used for trainers to explain the benefits of them using Fit Class. The other one will be for attendees to explain, uh, to click on explaining the benefits of using Fit Class. So it gives me two more navigations and a brief summary of what those pages <clears throat> what those pages are going to be. So write me an outline. So now that it told me, now I'm going to go through every one of these and I'm going to ask for a block by block section that I need to drag on the canvas from the block section and group pages for each of these pages. So we start with the home page. So I simply say, write me a block by block, uh, a block section by block section for the home page. It says, okay, you need a header a hero section that has a welcome message, call to action, featured classes, and a testimonial. Classes, a trainer's schedule, tips about us, FAQ, etc. <clears throat> okay, great. The other thing that it told me is that I needed an about us page. So I said, write me a block by block section. And it did that just like this. Okay. And I went on to do for the contact us page and every other page that there is. Write me an outline for the block by block section of the trainer's page. It did that. I, then I said, now do it for the Get Fit at Home page. That's for the attendees. It did that. It's basically giving me what I can give to uh, Debarshi to go build this website and grew for me. You follow? So One of the things I was really impressed about, Mike, uh, about this is when you asked it for the navigation, it didn't just say products, services, about us, home, help. It gave specific navigation for the seed it's it's smart enough yeah. to know what people will be looking for and and in what area so one of the one of the navigation yeah. suggestions was tips which is something that is unique to the platform uh the the ability to tip no you know no other platform is going to need a tips navigation but it was smart enough to know that you might want a tips navigation in in it so super impressive yeah yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm completely blown away, even, even as I read this. So look what I say here. You state over and over a call to action to join Fit Class, because it keeps saying in, in my things, you'll need a call to action section. So I said, write me a call to action section above the button 
And also, what text should I put in the call to action button? So above the button, ready to get fit from home, up the comfort of your own home, et cetera, et cetera, right? We don't have time to read all this. And then it gave me three choices to put in the button. I could put join fit class now, sign up for fit class, start your fit class journey, right? <clears throat> now, do the same, but address the trainer. It did that. Um, on the homepage, write me the welcome message for the hero section. It, look, Mike feels same typo. It knew that it, what the hero section was. Welcome to fit class. It wrote this for me right here. Check some of these things out that we're going to get here. Write me 10 headlines, make five targeted to trainers, five targeted for attendees. Now I know what headlines I could use on the web page. I know, I know which one I probably like uh, the most here. <clears throat> um, over here, guys, this is one of my favorite one here, ladies and gentlemen. Check this out. You know when you've, you've made your page and you go in, let's just uh, <clears throat> show you exactly what I mean here. You've all been there. You've all, all made your, your groove page, right? And this is, you know, MikeFillSame.com. Let's load it on the canvas. Well, while that's loading, let's just go here to the... Um, so, you know, when you have um, your page settings and your SEO and all this, you know, the page title, the keywords, the description, and then the open graph and the image and all that different type of stuff. You know, when you got to write that, you're always like, what should my title tag for my website be? Well... Wouldn't it be cool if you can just say right here, write me the title tag for the homepage, meta description, keywords, the OG title, and the OG description, and what text I should use at Canva on my OG image. And soon I'll be able to tell it to just create my OG image for me. Or I can. I can just do that at mid-journey, right? So title tag. Fitness, uh, fit class, virtual fitness marketplace, get fit at home. Meta description, just paste this right in. Paste these keywords in. Great, I don't even have to think about it. it. It knows it for me. It knows it better than I would have come up with. The OG title, so that when people share it in Skype or an iMessage or WhatsApp, it will load an image with this little preview text. That's here. OG description, paste that right in into Groove there. Next. The image, the, the, uh, the text that I need to put on the image, it just says virtual fitness marketplace, get fit from home. I love that. It, that. That's something better than I would have come up with. But look what it does here. It gives me one more that I didn't even ask for. It's telling me, hey, by the way, make sure to use the text and logo of the company in the OG image. Also, you might want to add a picture that represents the concept of getting fit from home and make it visually attractive. Uh, we're going to wrap this up and bring Cliff and Gina on just a second. I've got three more things I want to show you. Now, for each page, I need the copy, right? I need the actual copy. So write the copy I need for the trainer's page. So now this is talking to a trainer, somebody like Michelle that does Zumba, why they want to be on the platform. And it tells them everything that they need to know. It wrote the copy for me. I can now say, make it funnier, make it wittier, make it twice as long, make it shorter, just like that. <clears throat> Make me the copy for the Get Fit at Home page. This is for the person that wants to get fit. They're not necessarily the trainer. So it tells them all the benefits that they want there. One of my pages, it said, I need an FAQ section. Write me 10 FAQs. How does fit class work? Is fit class free to join? Can I work out at home from fit class? What types of classes are available? How do I book a class? I didn't even tell it how that works. It just knows that that's something that would need to be done. If it's not like this, which it actually is, I would go and change it. Can I tip my trainer during a class? How do I manage my class schedules and, and reservations? How do I become a trainer? Can I work out uh, on my TV? <clears throat> and I, yeah, I put one paragraph in there. I mean, one sentence that said they can, they can stream, uh, they can st uh, use AirPlay to stream their laptop to their screen and work out from home. Can I work out on my mobile device? Yes, you can because it uses Zoom, right? Um, I asked for some advantages, but let's get to the last things over here. Um, but you can see anything that I want. I could say, what are the advantages of fit class compared to local gyms? I didn't really give it that much information. It's using its brain to, to come up with these answers for me. So I told it to write me a YouTube ad for my YouTube um, channel. Then I told it to uh, write me a, a YouTube ad, right? So the first one was a video. Then I said, get, make, write me an ad.
And now if you guys go to groove.cm, I want to give you an example video that is a pain in the neck to write. And these things sometimes, sometimes take two to three weeks because, you know, me, Donna, or Elliot, we got to get in, my, in the right frame of mind to write the video for this, right? I might even rewrite it, right? I might feed everything I know about Groove and tell it to write me a three-minute video uh, for here. <clears throat> so, but look what I did. I need a video that I got to put in the front of Fit Class. I don't feel like writing this three-minute video. So look what I write here. I said, write me the script for a three-minute video sales letter, and then I put VSL, and tell me what the visual B-roll I need for each scene is. And look what it tells me. Opening shot, a montage to people working out in different locations, gym, park, home, et cetera. So I would type into you know, uh, you know, one of these royalty-free video pl uh, places, and I would type in, you know, People working out in different locations. A voiceover. Are you tired of the same old workout routine? Tired of feeling trapped in a gym membership you don't use? Tired of feeling self-conscious in crowded classes? Cut to a close-up of a person on the couch scrolling through their phone, looking bored. Voiceover. Introducing fit class. The virtual, et cetera, et cetera. Visual B-roll. Voiceover. Visual B-roll. Voiceover. Guys, I can't tell you how, how great this is. Write me an email for a card abandonment sequence. Great. Subject, hey, we noticed you left items in your cart at Fit Class. We wanted to remind you, use them for a limited time. Use the code FITCLASS10 at checkout to save 10%, right? Now I would modify this if that's not the case. So my point that I wanted to share with you guys here is simply don't just start with a blank conversation and say, write me an email for this or that. Dump in everything that you know about your company and it will do everything that you ever ever need. Again, it could write your webinars, your video sales letters. If you're going to say, I'm going to be speaking as a keynote speaker, give me a slide. But I, I, if, if, if I had time to do that, I would say, give me 20 slides. I'm speaking as a keynote at a health conference on fit class. Right. And I would say, you know, uh, focus on health and wellness and blah, blah, blah. And it would just do that for me. <clears throat> Here's some other examples I want to show you. Uh, this is something that I can simply just insert anything right here, and it's going to give me copy for the entire Groove website. So I say, write me a short paragraph sales copy using the feature benefit framework for, and then I put in quotes, order bumps for my app Groove Cell, which is part of the SaaS company Groove Funnels. <clears throat> Unlock the power of more sales and revenue with order bumps in Groove Cell, the ultimate sales and marketing platform from Groove Funnels. Easily add one-click upsells, and cross sales to your checkout pages, et cetera, et cetera. Now write me one for coupons. Want to increase customer loyalty and drive more sales? Look no further than the coupon feature with GrooveSell. It will just simply write all of these different things. Now, you'll see here, I changed it to pre-made drag and drop templates, right? For a GrooveMail, I put. Effortly create professional, engaging emails with GrooveMail's pre-made drag and drop templates. Say goodbye to the hassles, et cetera. So just be coming up with every little feature at Groove, this will write all of the copy for me. So that, uh, uh, how long have we been going here? We've been going for <clears throat> um, one hour and 15 minutes. So what we're gonna do now is um, I'm gonna uh, close this out and I'm gonna bring on Cliff and Gina and I'm gonna show you how you can use this for your, uh, uh, for your own uh, business as well. Gina, anything, Cliff and Gina, anything that I type here, I'm going to give you so that you could go home later and put this into your own chat GPT. So give me a thumbs up if you guys are ready to pop in. Okay. And we're going to bring you guys in. All right. So there's uh, Cliff. Cliff, you're on mute, I believe. And uh, his gorgeous, beautiful wife, Gina. Cliff is my cousin, my first cousin. Cliff's mom and my dad uh, were brother and sister. Uh, and Cliff lives in, uh, in South Florida, in Miami. And we just spent the weekend with him for Michelle's birthday. And we were talking about ChatGPT and AI. And he went absolutely, him and Gina went absolutely nuts and said, hey, I, uh, I, I want to work on you know, our website. And I want to see how, you know, how we can uh, do some more marketing and videos and all these different things. So what we're going to do, I'm going to create new chat here. I'm getting feedback from one of you guys. I'm not sure. Donna, are you hearing that as well? Yep. Cliff, I am. I you. think it's coming from Cliff. It was Cliff. He's, okay. he's you know, okay. the feedback guy. <laughs> <laughs> when I, if I mute, if I muted, does it uh, does it does it get rid of the feedback? It does when you're muted. So yeah. if you can just kind of 
be on the button and mute and unmute when you're talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it sounded like like a like a some type of air maybe from the fan of the computer. Not sure. All yeah. Right. So <clears throat> let's see if ChatGPT is uh, is up. Come on, let's cross our fingers here. <clears throat> But if not, we're going to do it in a Google Doc, and then we're going to put those uh, prompts in. Uh, but first, before we do that, let's share my screen. And let's do it like this. And what's your current website, guys? ChevalierLaw.com. All right. I should be able to spell that. C-H-E-V-A-L-I-E-R, uh, -E -E right? Chevalier. Two L's. Two L's. Uh, L -L -I -E -R. To, uh, some guy in Texas. <laughs> okay. You probably say that a lot. <laughs> I'm giving you a website. All right. All right. A attorney, Gina uh, Chevalier. Um, let's see here. Uh, estate planning and federal tax, Miami, uh, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So this is your, uh, your current website. You've got um, your home about estate planning. So these are some of the services that you provide here, right? Estate planning, probate, guardianship, federal tax. Uh, etc. Right. So let's do this and see. If I actually need to update it quite a bit because we don't do federal tax anymore. Like I don't promote federal tax. I don't want to get involved in that. All right. We're going to we're going to have to get you over to group pages. Um, yes. So let's see. Let's uh, let's open up a Google Doc uh, because, you know, we were prepared for chat GPT not to be up because it's just the way that it is. So uh, let me um, let me go over to here. I'll create a new one file new and let's pull this over right onto the screen here all right we can close some oh a couple of other things that you uh that you want to do there's this app guys i didn't give it to you it's called share gpt what's really good about share gpt is that when you're done it's a chrome plugin so when you're done with um with um a thread if you want to share it with people, you just click share. It'll compile it into an uh, into a URL, and then you could share it with people. Because a lot of the times, you might have an email that you want to share with your copywriter. Instead of copying and pasting, you can just click share. It'll create a URL for them. So that's called Share GPT. Okay. All right. So um, let's open up a Google Doc here, and we're just going to put um, Chevalier Law. I'll share this doc with you guys later. So <clears throat> we're just going to literally write down. Um, so number one, uh, tell me about uh, your law firm. We are so we're boutique. A, a boutique. Boutique estate planning, probate and guardianship firm. We handle all aspects of estate planning from simple to complex. Uh, let me write. Let me write all that down. Uh, lo located in Miami, Florida. Mm -hmm. um and you you specialize in we we can't say specialize because that's a oh, that's a florida okay. bar term that will get you a uh, sanction so we oh, uh, really? okay <laughs> so we're a small law firm in miami florida who um practices in the areas of estate planning estate planning oh, probate Okay. Mm -hmm. And guardianship. Administration and litigation. Administration and litigation. All right. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, how many years have you been in business? Uh, my firm has been in business just about seven years. Okay. Um, so let's go with, uh, <clears throat> estate planning. So I'm just going to take this and just in your own words, and I'm, we can probably even pull it off of the website as well, but let's just start it like this for now. Just uh, no, the website copy me... wasn't written by me, <laughs> so it's not good. Oh, <clears throat> okay. Let me zoom this in. It's harder for me to see it like this. Uh, it's a little too in my face, but it's easier for everyone at home. All right. Okay. So estate planning, um, <clears throat> why it's important. Okay. Why is it important? 
So I have a, a whole uh, video on this one, but estate planning is important because it helps you plan, preserve, protect, and pass on your wealth. Uh, it helps you plan, preserve, and protect your wealth. Your wealth so that you can pass it on to the next generation with minimal uh, stress to the beneficiaries or involvement with the court. Uh, with minimal stress to the beneficiary and what was the last thing with uh, minimal involvement of the court? Correct. Involve of the court. Okay, <clears throat> so um, one of the things that we'll do here um, is we will just uh, say, um, now we, we don't have to call it a horror story, but I'm just gonna do this right now. Horror I story, <laughs> right? Um, so uh, give me an example of what could happen if you don't do proper estate planning. Okay, so I'll talk to you about a case without um, mentioning too many details, but essentially sure. we had um, it, an unmarried couple and um, there was a reason why they were unmarried after 30 plus years together. Um, apparently one did not trust the other and wanted to make sure that his parents were taken care of. Uh, he dies in a freak accident and he had okay. never done his estate planning. So make sure his, uh, what, what you said he wanted to make sure his dad was taken care of his parents were his parents and his family were taken care of because he was very dedicated to his family. They had brought him here from Cuba. Um, you know, the, the whole long story, I'll try to make it as concise as possible. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. He died in a, in an accident, in a freak accident. And, um, the very next day, the partner was, trying to take over all of the assets of the business, uh, the business itself, all of his bank accounts, et cetera. And it, we ended up in um, a pretty substantial litigation where I think they were over 300,000 in attorney's fees. Wow. The, wow. The cost was over 300,000 in attorney's fees. Trying to correct something that could have easily been avoided with proper planning. Uh, hey everyone. Uh, so you guys only practice, I'm sure, for the state of Florida or? Uh, state of Florida, you, that's uh, correct. Okay. Well, anyone listening in Florida, you want to make sure that you contact uh, Gina at Chevalier with two L's law dot com. Uh, uh, so 300,000 attorney's fees trying to correct something that could have been taken care of. Uh, what, Through proper days? planning. All right. <clears throat> so so uh, let's just see if uh, chat GPT is back up just yet. All right. It, it is. So we can we can start uh, putting some of this this stuff in there. Um so our story, um, if you don't, if someone does not do, not do proper state planning, All right? We're gonna put this in quotes. And I'm just gonna say, here is an example <clears throat> our story of someone okay. <clears throat> all right so let's uh let's now talk about um uh probate what is probate is that uh... probate <clears throat> is the process through the court system of a 
right? Probate is the process through the court system of getting assets that are held in an individual name without any beneficiary designation into the hands of the beneficiary. Uh, so uh, you got a little ahead of me. I know it's tough for uh, to, to think and and, and think yeah. slow while I'm typing. Uh, probate is a process in the court system of getting assets that are an individual's name. Into the name of a beneficiary. All right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> why is that important? Okay. If an asset is held in an individual name without a beneficiary designation, uh, you cannot simply. Oh, let, let me let, let me let me do this. I want to show you something pretty pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You told me uh, before that you had a video on estate planning, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that's a, is that on YouTube? It should be. Okay. I thought so... I had twelve of them up there, but somebody told me the other day they could only see three. Oh, you might have them uh, as unlisted. Uh, oh. Let's see if we get lucky here. I want to show you something, Gina. You're going to like this one. Everybody's going to like this one. What happened? ChevalierLaw.com estate planning. Enter. <clears throat> What's going on? Mike, you want me to send you the links to the, uh, to the videos? Uh, yeah, if you can. Uh, what's funny is I hit I hit enter. That's the strangest thing I've ever seen. Let's uh, reload YouTube here. Maybe it's just I think YouTube didn't lo load. It's uh, is YouTube down? Is it slow? CNN loaded in a second for me. YouTube's not loading for me. Just bear with us, folks. <clears throat> yeah, YouTube's not loading for me. Is it, Donna, is it slow for you? Is YouTube down? It's working for me. <clears throat> okay, Donna, can you yeah. uh, search... ChevalierLaw.com. Yep. I got her. I, I'm about to drop the yeah. channel into your My, chat to see if that works. Mike finally broke the internet. <laughs> Did. <laughs> okay. Uh, Amanda, as a disabled lung person, using a tool like this to help me be more efficient and get more work done without needing to use all of my physical resources as, uh, has been a help, a godsend. Big hugs. Love to hear that, uh, Amanda. All right. So, Donna, uh, where'd you send to me? In Skype? <coughs> okay, Both in great. Skype and then you got it? Yep. So, uh, again, YouTube is down for me. Not sure why, so the video uh, won't load. But that's okay. Um, oh, is that the channel? Yes. yes. That's or it. Or the video. Okay. All right. So, okay. When is the right time to review your estate plan? So let's just say I wanted this video right here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this video URL. Everybody that's watching, here's what you wanna do, okay? Uh, you and, and by the way, let me just uh, check in Safari here for a second. I have a Safari browser open. Let me just see if, uh, if it's my Chrome. Yeah, very, very interesting. It's my, it's my Chrome. So, uh, but that won't matter here. Here's a website you want to go to. Uh, Gina, Cliff, you want to you uh, get this as well? Because Gina, most likely when you did your video, uh, you weren't reading from a teleprompter, right? You were going uh, from your brain? Correct. <clears throat> okay. So, so watch this. You can go to downsub.com. Okay. Uh, down, D-O-W-N-S-U-B.com. And downsub is a very spammy website, unfortunately. <clears throat> um, you know, it's one of these things like where you can rip a YouTube video down and then it makes it hard to find out where to actually get what you want. It's always popping up ads. But the, the bottom line is it does work, it's free and you could get um, 
uh, all of the subtitles downloaded from a video. So it's a quick way to get the transcriptions of a video pretty free. <clears throat> you know, Google's not that bad. They're not the best at it. Did you see what happened? I clicked into the search bar and it immediately sent me to another website, right? So like I said, you've been here. These websites are annoying. I got to click here again. I'm going to paste that YouTube URL in and I'm going to click download and it's going to make it very difficult for me to find, you know, through all of these ads. Here it is right here. Here's the text that I want. So I just click download text <coughs> and you're going to notice right here, just like this. Hi, Gina Chevalier here from South Florida State's attorney. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about, and I'm just going to get, just delete all of that. And right now we've got something that we can just paste into chat GPT, you know, like, so we could start building sections. We could be like, here's the state planning and we could, we can, and don't worry if it's like, well, I also have another video Add 13 videos. And if one was better than the other, just, just add what you have. And unless you have something that's incorrect, that's the beautiful thing about a neural network. This thing has the world's information. It has all of Wikipedia. It knows how to parse the good from the bad. And so now you could get all of your, <laughs> You could get all of your content that you put out on videos as well and load it into ChatGPT to feed this, uh, this engine uh, as well. So that's an example. You said, remember you said earlier, you said, I have a video on, uh, on estate planning. Now, um, the, the thing that you want to do, uh, Gina, is you want to go in to your YouTube video. Let me, uh, let me sign in here to our Groove account. Bear with me just a second. I'm on another screen. Okay. So Gina, when you when you go to your to your studio and you click on a video, when you yeah. look on uh, any particular video, and I don't know necessarily if this is the the problem or not, <clears throat> you want to see right over. Let's see here, visibility. You might have it as unlisted. So you want to make okay. it public. Yeah. And, uh, and that could be the only reason why it's not showing up on your, you know, at your, uh, on your channel, if it, if it's there. All right. Um, yeah. So going, <clears throat> going back, what, um, what I would do is I would, I would get, fill out all of this, this information. I would do it for, uh, for estate planning and I would load it into chat GPT. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to, I'm just going to uh, put this next one in as well. Uh, did we finish the next one? Let's see. Uh, let's, so let's finish probate planning, and then we're, we're going to go through the, the exercise here. And then, uh, Cliff, you, Gene, and I can get together, and we can really, really flesh this out. Because I think we're probably going to want to spend a good two, three hours on it, right? And I want to, uh, you know, doing this part right here is going to be a little difficult. There's not much learning for everyone here, obviously, right? But I want to show them at least the idea of starting to flush out ideas. And then once you have that brain dump, I'm going to show, uh, show you what we would do. So um, uh, why is it important? You were saying if an asset is held, uh, it's uh, why it's important if an asset is held in probate? In, no, in your individual name and you die, um, the beneficiary can't just take it over. So for example, if you have real estate, and it's only titled in your name. The intended, in, the intended beneficiary can't take Correct, over. the intended beneficiary. They can't yeah. simply take ownership of it. It has to pass through this process in the court, which can be lengthy, um, time consuming, uh, expensive, and it opens a door to creditors. Oh, wow. Yes. So uh, let's say you have $300,000 uh, 
uh, in an account and you wanted to leave it to your kids, right? <clears throat> um, you know, uh, you, you're, um, you want to leave it to your kids. Maybe, maybe your spouse, you know, has passed away and you're, you know, you're an 88 year old um, woman or man. And, you know, you want to leave things to your grandkids, right? But you didn't, um, you didn't uh, do your proper estate planning. So what you're saying is the, um, that it basically can get caught up in the, uh, in the court system. And if there's creditors that say, wait a second, wait a second, uh, we had a lawsuit uh, here and this person owed us $200,000, they can go and attach the uh, attack, uh, go after all of this stuff. <clears throat> they file a claim be, in the said, probate and they get paid. Yeah. And it could be lengthy, costly, right? Because mm -hmm. you got to deal with the courts and time consuming, right? So I'm going to take um, all of this uh, here. I'm going to paste it in here like this and I'm going to tell it um, here. Um, I am going to tell you about my law firm uh, be, uh, below. I will give you information. <clears throat> I want to use this information to help me build a website to attract uh, clients. Oops. Website to attract clients uh, and to use in my marketing on social media. Uh, and to make content videos for my YouTube and social media and TikTok uh, and <clears throat> to make marketing videos on the, the website. Here is some information about my law firm. I'm going to put this in quotes. All right. And again, let me copy all of this stuff because we're dealing with a very, very finicky website, ChatGPT. And if I, all that typing I did right there and I go to, and this is a little bit of news for you guys as well. If you go to, if you're using ChatGPT and you type something, make sure that you save the prompt here because the last thing you want is, you know, you, you typed all of this information in there and you click and all of a sudden it gives you a red error and it says ChatGPT is timed out, right? You don't want to do that. So look, um, oh, look at this. It's up right now. This is, this is amazing. Based on this information, it seems like your law firm specialized. So it's giving me a summary automatically. So now what I can do ahead of time is I can say, um, I want to build a website Oops. Wow. for, sorry, for uh, my law firm. Um, please provide- We need AI me. to fix your typos, Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's me thinking and typing out loud. Uh, please, pro uh, it's horrible and it's embarrassing. Please provide me with uh, website navigation uh, for this website. All right. So this is what you're, uh, it's going to tell us your website navigation should be. <clears throat> I'm so glad this is up right now because, you know, uh, other, we would just have to say, Hey, here's what you need to do when you go home. So you need a home about us page. Let's see what we have currently right now. We have home about us. So that's good. Um, let's move this over to here. Um, services. So it's saying um, that uh, you might want to uh, put a page just called services and then list all the services on one page. But since you specialize, I know you're not allowed to say specialize, since uh, you're experts uh, in... Uh, Can't use that word either. Certain, <laughs> no. Uh, since, what was the word that you used? Um, you can use the word focus. Services, yeah. And focus, you can use that. You focus on Yes, right? focus. All right. <clears throat> all right. 
So resource sources, testimonials, <coughs> contact us, a blog, FAQ section, and careers. All right. We'll probably get rid of careers. I don't think uh, that I know that. the way so, it's been working lately. Yeah. I might want to leave that up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's now hard write to find me people. A block. So you are looking for people. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Block yeah. section by block section or and they had they called it the home page okay so now it's going to basically tell us what it's probably going to say navigation etc etc cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> so it's telling us the header needs to have your firm's logo as well as links to the other pages that would that it just listed the hero section this section should be etc cetera, etc cetera. now what i can do is i can go and i can say give me a block by block section for all of those pages. We're not going to do that right now for the sake of time, right? But what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to say, we're going to take this first section, right? Uh, well, we know the header. So the hero section. So um, what this section, this first section should be the first thing the visitor sees when they land on your page. It should include a brief overview of your law firm services as well. So let's watch this. We're just going to take the instructions that it's giving us. We're going to say expand on this. Provide me with, paste, a brief overview of my law firm's services. And we'll do this one second. <clears throat> now, again, we didn't feed it enough information, right? Could you imagine what would happen if we spent the time to put all this information, get some of the additional papers. And all you got to do, Gina, is just say, here's more information, paste. Here's more information on estate planning, paste. Here's more information. You know, here's a report that, you know, uh, that I wrote, paste, paste, paste. And you could just load. It doesn't have to be in one prompt. You could preload the seed with 30 different prompts. Okay. <clears throat> and so uh, here we have a brief overview. And so this would be in the hero section. So let's look at what you currently have, right? Um, Empathetic, compassionate, legal. It's kind of like a headline, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say that this is kind of like what they're saying. Um, and this right here is written over here like this. Welcome to Chevalier Law, a boutique law firm located in Miami. We specialize in, right, where did it get that from? Like our limited <laughs> seat. With seven years of experience, our team is dedicated to helping clients. Our estate planning services include drafting of wills, trust. We didn't say that. We didn't say that. It knows mm -hmm. that this is, you see, this is what, it, it just helps you. And again, if you don't do something, right? Or maybe it says, says we specialize, right? You'll go in and tweak that. We also mm -hmm. assist in the probate process. We, we also offer guardianship. And that's because we have limited information there, right? Let me show you some other things that, that you can do. <clears throat> um, you can take this and... I'm going to say, and this is this is very, very interesting, interesting here, right? Rewrite this in an eighth grade reading level. <clears throat> and by the way, uh, what I just did, the, the fact that I just pasted this information, it's going to add it to this chat's neural network, and it might pull from it later. Right. So anything that we're adding, it's going to it might even, quote unquote, be used against you. Right. Any, it, it, it's going to use this in further things. But um, watch this. I'm going to say um, I'm just going to say rewrite an eighth grade reading level. And then I can say now make it into one paragraph. <clears throat> but let's just see right here. And because the thing is, is even though we are lawyers. Right. And we tend to be lawyers. We sometimes tend to write as if we're writing, uh, you know, a legal document, right? Uh, yeah. we, sometimes we can't help ourselves. It's the way our brains think, right? So th this took all of this information. I didn't tell it to write it shorter. I just said, rewrite this in an eighth grade reading level. <clears throat> so let's just take the time, you know, and folks, I do understand this is later in the, um, in our hangout that we're doing right here. So, so if you're enjoying this, you know, hanging out with us, but I do understand some of you may want to watch this later on the replay, but so I'm going to take a little bit more time here because I'm interested. 
So I'm going to Mike, I'm we're talking in the chat a little bit on this topic. Uh, you you asked for at the eighth grade reading level. We were talking in the chat about how you can seed chat GPT with your brand voice as well. So you can say the brand voice is authoritative, informative, friendly, confident, yes. uh, funny, irreverent, uh, anything like that. Yeah. And then that will inform everything that you get back. You can also say like in the style of Ryan Reynolds and then everything will sound like Ryan Reynolds is speaking. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, not, um... You can ask for the same thing in different, for different audiences. So, you know, uh, um, describe probate to someone who's never heard about probate before or describe probate right. to a law student and you'll get two entirely different sets of responses. So. Yeah. You know, um, you know, uh, Cliff, Gina, we were on somebody's yacht the other day, right? Um, who, um, you know, very, very wealthy person, but really, you know, came, came up, you know, a father immigrant from, immigrant from Cuba, came up from the ground floor. You know, we were talking a little bit about, you know, online stuff. He goes, oh, I don't do that. He's, you know, so somebody, what we have to realize, you know, sometimes is there, there are some people that just have that good old street smarts, you know, they're just, you know, they're, they're, they're really good entrepreneurs, hard workers, but you know what, like you might want to start talking to them about this and they may go, I don't know about this stuff. You're saying stuff that's over my head. So sometimes the people that need our services, especially in law or accounting, um, need them more than the average person and the more law and legal and words like probate and stuff that we start talking to. That's why putting things like a fourth grade reading level. So let's just see what happens here. Um, it says the law firm of G Gina R. Chevalier is a legal service provi uh, provider in South Florida. They help, and this could be changed that we help with real estate planning, probate, guardianship, and federal tax issues. Uh, they believe in, we believe in building trust with our clients and we will work with you to find the best solution for your specific legal needs. We don't use a one size fits all approach and have team members with diverse backgrounds and interests. We also understand that the issues can be sensitive and we'll handle them with care and compassion. Uh, contact us to schedule an appointment, right? And I'm sure that was that's much better. You know, in here and it, <coughs> yeah, it's simple and concise, right? Yeah. So that's the, the nice thing is sometimes we want to get, just get it all out of our head, right? And this will... Tell us, hey, let me let me uh, let me uh, make that more concise for you. So pretty much, you know, uh, everything on the the website as well. Even um, even this, I'm just gonna have fun with this. Uh, re write this. I'm just gonna go right to here. Save me having to do that in an eighth grade reading level. So let's just see what happens here. So I think. This might, let, let's see, estate planning poses a seemingly endless stream of legal challenges that the average person finds difficult to overcome in a seamless manner. Um, I think that's pretty straightforward. I don't think it's, you know, too, uh, using too much jargon, but let's see if it can just rewrite this better. Rewrite this better. I'm going to put better in all caps here. Better and in an eighth grade reading level. <laughs> Estate planning can be tough and, and confusing with a lot of legal challenges that can be hard for regular people to understand and, uh, and handle smoothly. Again, you know, that was just a paragraph. There's only so much that it, that, that it can do. Um, let, me, um, let me do this here. Um, write me, I'm just gonna, I don't think, let, let, let's see, uh, write me a tick tock ad script for 30 seconds talking about the state, about the horrors of not properly planning the state planning. I can write that better, but the beautiful thing is this is, this is AI prop. See, here's your script for TikTok. Looks like uh, ChatGPT has its good times and bad times, but we did catch it a good time before. Um, I'm curious if it if it even knows what uh, 
what TikTok is. It would know what TikTok is, right? In 2011, uh, uh, 2021. Yeah. But yeah, so so uh, guys, this is what this is what I would recommend. I would recommend Gina at everything that you have from your website, copy, paste, uh, any white papers that you've written, say, here's another prompt. Here's another prompt. Take your about us page, say, this is our about us. This and just just dump everything, download all of the videos, everything that you've done and just put it in as like 14, 15, 25 different prompts. And then from there, you can literally say, Write me the navigation for my website, then give me a section section breakdown for my website, and then each section say write me the copy for this section. And if it says you know have a button where the call to action say what should the button say, and it'll literally just create the the blueprint uh, for you. You can um, yeah network error. <clears throat> Trying to get oh there we go. Uh, so here's your TikTok right. Are you putting off estate planning? Interesting. Do you notice right? Are you putting it off? It knows the 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 hook and the objections you know that is needed for uh for this type of horror story right are you putting off I estate like planning you didn't Don't... even you didn't even write properly planning estate planning you have a, a typo in there and it uh, came proper, back properly. with the correct word yeah yeah that's amazing yeah, I, I i already preceded it from michael same <laughs> so <laughs> are you putting off estate planning don't make the mistake of not properly planning for the future. Just imagine, see, and right? It only knows this story, right? But if you give it more stories like this, it's only going to be better. Just imagine you and your partner have been together for 30 years. See, just imagine it's using that as a story, but you don't have a proper estate plan in place. Tragically, you're in a freak ad accident and pass, pass away. The very next day, your partner is trying to take all of your aspects of your business and bank account, but it becomes a legal nightmare. The cost, obviously, right, you know, we, we know where it's getting. It's, it, it had limited mm -hmm. information. But if we give it more case studies, even, um, uh, you know, getting stories off of Google, like, you know, you can go to Google and say uh, nightmares from proper, uh, improper estate planning and paste it. Here's another example, another example. And then it can, it'll just have more information. Don't let this happen to you. At our law firm, we specialize in estate planning and can help you preserve and protect your wealth so that you, your loved ones won't have to go through a costly and stressful process. Contact us today and let us plan for the future. And it's even giving you little hashtags, right? So I think that that pretty much wraps it up, <clears throat> um, uh, you know, here, everyone. And I'll uh, stop sharing the, the screen. I'll just come to here. Um, but Cliff, Gina, maybe we'll spend, a, you know, a day literally doing, you know, what we just said you know, uh, come down to the, uh, up to here, I'll come visit you or we go down to the studio. Um, but then we're going to tell it, write our three minute video sales letter. And then, you know, uh, and, and look, Gina, if you, if you don't like to read from a teleprompter, instead of saying, write me a YouTube ad script, we can say, give me the bullet points. I want to talk about my YouTube video. And it'll just tell you, it'll just give you six bullet points. Right. And then if you feel more comfortable uh, just speaking to the camera instead of a teleprompter. But that's what I really wanted to showcase was uh, seeding. If you if we seed this, and if, if you remember, you guys were on the call earlier, um, we were talking about personality.ai, uploading your consciousness so we can act like you. This is a, a version of that, right? We're uploading the consciousness of your law firm and all the hard work that you've done into this law firm. So we're going to get... Um, Everything that you've ever written, with the exception of what you've done for a client, right? But any content that you've put out there, white yeah. papers, YouTube videos, we're going to download it. We're just going to put it in. Yeah. And then we're going to build out the outline for your new website and, you know, get you designed the most, you know, beautiful uh, brand new website uh, out there. Uh, right. And then, you know, we'll have it put together a marketing, literally, we can, we can say, put together a marketing plan, all this stuff, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's, it's, it's insane what this will do for us. And we it's can't, amazing. we can't discount anything. If you can come up with something, and let, I'll just share my screen back here again, I believe it's still on. Um, write <clears throat> me a marketing plan. Or I'm going to be very broad for uh getting more clients. Develop a strong online presence, create a professional website. And it's telling us what the website needs to be. Number two, networking, right? 
but uh, you know, we 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 see where this is going. But then we can, if we see one of these things that that we like, like social media, we could say, create me a social media um, uh, marketing plan. Uh, it, you know, uh, you create create me whatever what, whatever it might be. It'll, but this is interesting: online advertising, referral marketing, content marketing, right? Many of these things, you know, you guys are already doing or attempting to do. <clears throat> so, uh, so Cliff, Gina, I want to thank you guys for for being on here, being our our guinea pig. Uh, for uh, for showing how AI can be used with uh, with proper seeding, I think that's really the key thing. Uh, the biggest takeaway that I want everybody to take away from today is that um, AI is there for you. If you give it the information, it'll give you everything, and and you could actually see its limitations because you know we we did a, a Google Doc with two paragraphs, so it was trying to write everything based around those two paragraphs. But if we feed that neural network with our you know, upload the consciousness of the law firm, it's going to be able to not only uh, do what we said, but three weeks from now, three years from now, you'll be able to go into this thread and say, you know, you, you, you and Cliff are in a rush and you're like, I got to get this email to, out to my client. Um, you can just go in and say, um, uh, I recently met this client at a mixer in San Diego. Um, please write me an email to this client uh, and say, you know, I promise to get back to him within 48 hours, right? You're just like you would say to a personal assistant, write this uh, email to a client, the steps that he needs to work with me uh, to set up his estate planning and, it's, uh, and write it in my voice. And it'll say, hi, it's Gina. We met here the other day. And so you, you just take the time to just, you know, get it out of your head and it'll write an email for you to the client. Uh, that is amazing. You know, with all the stuff. Amazing. And in many cases, it'll do it better than we will because we're busy, right? We are not our optimized self. Right. This thing is always optimized to do things, do things the best that it can, you know. Well, thank you so much right. for sharing your knowledge and all of your information with all of us. Uh, happy to be your guinea pig whenever you need it. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Uh, I'm going to boot thank you guys you, out thank of you here. And then you, can, you can watch the rest. But we're just closing up right now. Thanks, Cliff. Okay. Gene, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Okay, everybody, we're going to go to the, the very final step here, and I'm just going to uh, allow you to join the dream here of something that we're doing uh, with Groove in terms of planning. So there's a website uh, out right now called uh, Sitekick, all right? Uh, not Sidekick, Sight, S-I-T-E, kick, dot A-I. But it, it, it's very rudimentary, but... It, it sparked an idea for us. So let me just take this and just go to YouTube. Let's see if YouTube's up for me now. Uh, no, so we're gonna do it over here. I gotta find out why YouTube doesn't wanna work for me. So we're gonna go to YouTube in my Safari browser, which does apparently work. And we're gonna type in sidekick.ai. And I'm gonna click right here. I have to wait, wait for the ad. <laughs> click skip ad. And I'm going to click on the mute button here. And so what I want to show you folks is that what this person, Victor, did right here is he simply created a user interface. So one of the things I didn't say um, is that, you know, the next, next millionaires and billionaires are going to be made by people that understand that they're in the business of doing arbitrage for AI. The, uh, the AI <clears throat> uh, open source API exists. So all you have to do is be in the business of creating a user interface and a user experience web kit that just goes around basically telling people enter a prompt and gives an output. So what you're seeing right here is the person just said, gave you two prompts. Give me a company name and a little bit of a description about the website and that's it. So if you can imagine if we, we train it to do a little bit more like we just did with Cliff and Gina, right? By telling people upload different information that you have and the more the better. But as you can see here, this generates, uh, when you click generate, it generates a, 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 a website for you automatically, all right? And there you go, created a header, enter your email address for your company called Product Hunt, okay? But here's what I wanna show you, if I can zoom in, it's very important. Uh, big. It doesn't zoom the video in, so it didn't help too much. But right here, it says export to Webflow. 
right? <clears throat> I've actually reached out to this young man, Victor, to have him also export to Groove Pages. But having said that, let's go back to my little face over here. What, what we're going to do with Groove is imagine if we had something that allowed you to do the exercise that we just did right now with Cliff and Gina. Or maybe we had a wizard where we asked you 20 questions or, or we just said, now you know, just upload the consciousness of your, of your, your company, upload YouTube scripts, video, uh, Google docs, everything that you could tell us about your company, the same way that I did for fit class. And if you guys remember what I did for fit class, it was probably 20 minutes worth of work. <clears throat> but then from there, imagine if we, you could then say, build me a website that looks like, and you could put in a URL of, uh, of, of a website you like. Remember, Mike said a fintech website, but you could also see the URL. And then um, the same way Sidekick does, produce a website for you. But remember, our prompts are going to be preceded. We're going to precede it to know, build the navigation, then the block by block section, and then the copy. So imagine, excuse me, group pages having the ability to... Simply take the same prompt we did with ChatGPT, but then have your entire website, navigation, and copy completely built in eight different word uh, group pages in 30 seconds, right? Because it's, where is it going to build the website? Well, it has uh, mid-journey. It could generate images. It can generate all the block-by-block -block landing pages in the style of another website. <clears throat> so um, this stuff is not as complicated as you might think, this guy's already created a quote unquote rudimentary one page builder that exports to Webflow. What we're doing is we're expanding. We're saying instead of giving us one prompt like this, give us more information. And that, and we will precede the prompt with start with the navigation. Once we have the navigation, <clears throat> give us the block by block section. Now go write the copy for each of those blocks, write the FAQs, write the footer, do all of these things, link everything together. And if you remember, it does the title tags, it does the keywords, it does the meta description, the open graph, the open graph image, it'll create everything, your share images, everything for you would automatically be built out. But um, we don't stop there. Imagine you now go into GrooveMail and remember what I just told Gina? And I said, hey, Gina, wouldn't it be great if you uploaded the conscious, consciousness of your business? Well, you saw me writing emails to Groovesters for Fit Class. Imagine you just wanted to go in and write an email. And instead of writing an email, you use the prompt, you know, the, the, the magic Groove prompt and say, write an email to my subscribers, use urgency, tell them that it expires Sunday at midnight, um, make it witty, funny, in the style of Frank Kern. Boom, <laughs> writes the email, you hit send. That's what we're going to be bringing um, to Groove. Um, it's not something we're making a major change to. Uh, we have all of our commitments uh, that we have. We have our limited resources. We have to build back our, our development team based on what we spoke about in our last day of the Groovian. But it would be foolish for us to not be having these conversations right now. And our developers are getting back to us right now saying, guys, you, you don't believe how easy this actually is. The API is there. All we have to do, we're not, we're not inventing anything, guys. Jasper didn't invent anything. They created an API with some pre-made tweaked prompts. <clears throat> so now imagine you go to Groove Blog and your Groove, right? We want to write an article on the 10 reasons why you should be using funnel marketing in your business. Well, imagine having to write that blog article right now. Oh, my God. You'd have to type that into Google. You'd have to go read 10 other people's blogs, take notes about them, watch YouTube videos, take notes, and then you don't want to plagiarize anybody. So you're going to have to write it in your own style. This is a three-day blog post <coughs> easily. It's got to get proofread. OpenAI has perfect grammar. By the way, Grammarly will argue with that, but it has perfect grammar, right? So imagine just going in to Groove Blog, and you could write a blog, or you click the magic, uh, the Groove Magic Blog Creator. Write me a blog, blog post. Come up with a clickbaity title um, <clears throat> that uh, tells a person in digital marketing why they need the top 10 reasons why they need to be using funnel marketing. Make sure to pivot at the end on that they can do all of this with Groove. 
create the, uh, and, and, and that's it. And we would pre-program it to create images for you and a featured image, you would hit submit and boom, you automatically have your blog written for you. It does the title tags, the open graph image, the keywords, the meta description. It adds images in the blog post. It adds bold, bullet points, everything for you. First of all, these things exist already out there, right? Jasper will do this for you right now. Jasper does this. They don't build the websites, but you could write an email. You could write a blog article. And guess what? You can do everything that I just said with ChatGPT. But if we, uh, somebody just said, this is going to really be, uh, 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 this is going to be really great adding the existing power of Groove. Uh, here, bro, this will make Groove a billion dollar company. Uh, yeah, we, we, we're, we're excited about this conversation that we had. We're not um, you know, going to go stop doing everything that we're doing. But after a three hour presentation or two hour presentation that we've done here with you guys today, you can see it would be foolish for us to not be seeing that these things are available and available very, very easily. Like I said, this documentation is as, is, it's as easy as creating a Stripe checkout. It's as easy as creating a Stripe checkout if you're a, so a software company. You go in, you pre-set pre the prompts that say when the user adds this, add a little salt and pepper. Add in the style of Dan Kennedy in the background, right? Use urgency, scarcity, make it fun, witty. We could pre-program all of these different things, or we could put it into a drop-down. Write the email, and then we could put little, you know, seasoning for the email. Drop down, witty. You could check out fun in the style of all these different th things. So that's what we're seeing that can be done for writing emails. Or imagine you're in GrooveCart, right? You're in GrooveCart, and you have a product, and you <clears throat> you uh, have a product, and just by the basic information you put about the product, you say, write me a description, write me all these different things, write me the card abandonment sequences. All of this stuff. And finally, the very last one that we're going to talk about this, you've uploaded the consciousness of your business. What if not just build you a website? What if <clears throat> you said, create me a book funnel? And it says, oh, book funnel. Well, we know that you need this. And it creates your funnel page, your thank you page, your upsell page. Or you can even say, add an upsell page. It just throws it right into the mix. Write me a webinar funnel. Or create me a webinar funnel for this. I'm doing a webinar on Friday. I'm going to be talking specifically about how to create good headlines. Write me a webinar, build out all of your pages for you. So it'll, it's going to create your funnels, your websites, your emails, your, your product descriptions in, uh, and your blogs. So um, I would love to see that, uh, that come out, uh, you know, by the end of this year. And, you know, if uh, things go well with us this year, which we anticipate, we believe that that, <clears throat> That can be a reality. Um, Donna, was there anything on your sheet that I missed that I didn't talk about? I would go to the last page. Just show them what, what we've done on the last page. What I do is I took all of your prompts from the fit class case study, and I tried to codify them into basically 20 steps that you can do and have a conversation with uh, chat GPT and, and get all the copy that you need. So I just like to point that out to them. Okay. The last page. Yeah. Uh, in the Google Doc? In the Google Doc. Okay. That says, um, oh, I see here. Okay. Uh, a copywriting case study. That one? Yes. Oh, no, never mind. Let me go to the last page, your actual last page. Okay. And that's this. So you can uh, click share screen. Uh, uh, this one. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. Yeah. And uh, we're giving everybody access to this document, you said, right? Everybody has access. Yep. <clears throat> Yeah. So, so Donna yeah, what I did here was I just ahead, went just... through I went through um, the case study that you did in fit class and I pulled out what you did and then I added some some helpful ideas in here for you. So you can basically go through this is the list of copy that you'll need um, for starting your business. It's all the copy you'll need for your page, emails to announce it, social copy. There are all the prompts in there for you. Right. So there you go. We could go sell this at prompt base for $1.99, but you guys we get it could. for free. Isn't, isn't that great being a, <laughs> being here with a, a member of Groove? And that's exactly what prompt base is. Prompt base is just a seed. People are selling seeds. So we're going to create a seed um, eventually in Groove that you just tell it about your business and it automatically will out, output 
funnels, emails, all these things for you. But in the meantime, ChatGPT will do most of the things that I said, with the exception of building your website. Just, just upload the consciousness of your business, as we said, download every video, just dump it into a prompt, dump it into a prompt, everything that you have, <clears throat> everything that you have that's you know, private, that's not private, right? You know, that, that, you, that you would not mind sharing publicly and just dump it and let it learn from you. Just like that company, personality.ai did about you, you would do the same for your business. And then guys, you never have to think again. You can just come in every single day, write me an email that does this, speaks to this person, give it a, you know, a little bit of instruction, the same way that you would talk to your copywriter every morning. Hey, is there anything you want me to do? Yeah, you know, let's let's do some content today. Write an email about uh, the f f five ways to come up with good headlines. Okay, great. <laughs> Imagine, boom, that's done in 30 seconds. And it'll write your, your blog articles for you. This stuff is really exciting, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this uh, free content presentation. Uh, as we said, we'd be doing more stuff here with you guys with uh, with Zoom, <coughs> with, um, uh, with uh, Groove. And... Yep. We have another one tomorrow. In fact, uh, we have we have a free content presentation between uh, Deb Cole and I. Deb Cole is going to explain to me how I can create social video because I am um, I'm I use my phone for texting and that's about it. So she's going to help me um, learn social video. So some great tools to create it on the fly and out and and in. She's a great friend of mine. So I reached out to her from help. And when she said, oh, we'll get on a call. I'll explain it all to you. Make it easy. I said, well, let's get on a call and explain it all to my members and make it easy. So that's exactly what's happening tomorrow. You're going to get to be a fly on the wall and listen oh, nice. to Deb teach me how to do social video. Yeah, I can't wait. There's so many tools out there. There's Cap CapCut. There's Lumen, InVideo, Descript. I'm curious mm -hmm. what she does because she's one of the best at this. So uh, it's about being able to take her workflow and just get a yeah. recipe from it. So so you guys don't want to miss that. So Donna, thank you uh, very much for being my co-pilot here today. Thanks to Cliff and Gina for coming and being our, uh, our case study. And uh, we'll see you uh, all tomorrow. That's uh, two hours and 10 minutes. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, everyone.